this is M5 paper. This is also M5 paper. And guess what? We're only going to talk about one of them. Hi, there are two types of people. People who like paper and those who... Wait, wait a minute. Is there actually someone that doesn't like paper? It's... Paper is awesome. And since we already established that everyone loves paper, let's talk about the electronic version of paper. And I know what you're gonna say. E-ink absolutely sucks at dark and it's equally terrible when it comes to displaying games. And I will agree with you. However, that won't stop me from liking M5 paper. But obviously you want to know more about this, so let's take a closer look at this cute device and I'll explain why I got so giddy during my live stream. I'll be honest with you guys, every time I get my hands on a new M5 stack device I get extremely happy, mostly because they are amazing device. And even though the formula is each time very similar, there is a ESP32 inside and a device that allows you to tinker and play with, they manage to throw something fresh in the mix. And it's the same with the M5 paper. It's obviously not the first time someone attached an e-ink to ESP32, but you have to admit this has been done in a very spectacular manner. This gorgeous 4.7 inch display is capable of displaying 16 colors in resolution of 540 by 960. And on top of that comes with a multi-touch display that actually makes that e-ink refresh rate quite bearable. And I know you're going to tell me other devices come with 10-point touch display, but I don't know about you guys, but uh, this is the way I use my palm-sized devices. Like, yeah, definitely how I use it. This e-ink display is obviously a new thing, but this is not the only e-ink product from M5 Stack. There is also Core Ink that uh, I'll link in my article if you want to check it out. And since this is ESP32, it's obviously Bluetooth enabled and compatible with 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band. Flip the device on the other side and you'll notice how much features and attention went into this design. So it's as usual, charged with USB Type-C. Yes, I'm really, really super happy that this is actually a thing. There are three expansion ports, there are groove connectors that you can use with compatible expansion boards and sensors. Now Seed Studio alone have about 300 different modules, so you're definitely not going to uh, run out of toys to try with this device. If that's not enough, there are two physical buttons on it, which one kind of looks like a really cool rocker with a button function. There is a micro SD card slot in case you need a storage. There are a couple of sensors inside, including temperature and humidity, and RTC, real-time clock, which you can use to increase and prolong the life of your M5 paper device. As ESP32 chips aren't exactly known for being battery-friendly, you can use that RTC to enable very low power sleep policy and only wake up the device when needed, taking advantage of the e-ink display that's always going to display the information on screen that you need. This is a palm-sized device that is really fun to play. It comes with an on-screen keyboard, which I thought at first I'm gonna hate, but thanks to that responsive touchscreen, it's actually quite pleasant to use and it's not terrible at typing. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is still an e-ink display and the refresh rate isn't great if you compare that with TF and uh, LCD, but as far as e-ink displays go, it's actually pleasant to use and I have no problem using it in that fashion. I'm actually looking forward into creating some sort of dashboard that I could take advantage of the low power display modes and display the information on the screen for a prolonged period of time. I have to say, I got really spoiled by the Fire Development Kit mostly because you can program it without using any wires thanks to built-in battery and the ability to use UI flow online and send the code over the internet. Now that's not the case for M5 paper and unfortunately you'll have to plug the device in to either use M5 burner to upload community projects or use Arduino IDE to program ESP in a more traditional fashion. 
Now that holds true at the time of video, but I really, really hope that this device is gonna join the rooster of UI flow, which you can then take advantage of in terms of using MicroPython and using block style programming if you're just getting started. This is a fairly new device, which leads me to another point. There aren't many community projects right now available to download via M5 burner. Now it's ESP based, so you're still open to all the libraries and all the projects that are ESP32 based, but you will be in charge of translating whatever displays they have into a e-ink displays library. If you are new to ESP programming, consider actually Core Ink instead, which is implemented into UIFlow, and you'll have the ability to program it using a block code, MicroPython, and do it wirelessly uh, using UIFlow. You're gonna thank me later. The demo firmware comes with a couple of interesting panels with uh, probably the most interesting for me being a home panel, which imitates uh, controls for home automation. This is something I really, really wanted to play with, but as it turns out, uh, this actually panel isn't featured anywhere on a GitHub yet. So I kind of got stuck waiting for the code to be released. So I could uh, try to hook it up to my home and enable a couple of lights and heating system from this device directly. This is something I'm definitely gonna spend some time more trying to do because the idea of having a panel like this controlling my devices and well, drawing next to nothing in terms of power consumption really appeals to me. If you're going to buy this device, I've got a tip for you. The button at the back instantly freezes the screen and shuts down ESP32, entering low power mode. Now to wake up the device, just hold the um, and if you want to bring the device to uh, life again, just hold the rocker button for about two seconds and the device will power on uh, ESP32 and becomes responsive again, so you could play about a little bit further. I'd like to thank M5 Stack for sending me this so I could take a look and share my thoughts with you. I hope in the future you're gonna see this in a couple of projects because my head is full of ideas, but right now I'm trying to find some time. Now, if you can get over the fact that right now the EUI flow isn't supporting this device and you have to use Arduino IDE, then go ahead, you have my full recommendation in terms of getting this. Now, in the description of this video, you're going to find a link where to buy it and article telling you a little bit more about the device itself. And if I made you curious about the Fire Development Kit or M5 Stick, and then go and check it out at the end of this video. I got a link both reviews so you could watch it after this one. Right guys, as usual, I do not have a posting schedule, so the best way to find out what's gonna happen to M5 Paper and what projects it's gonna be featuring it, just follow me on any given social media and you're gonna get an instant notification when the next video is out. As for now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.